In this video, we will look into Venus PWAF from Venus MedTech into its product specification and the main focus today is on loading the VAF in preparation for pulmonary VAF implantation. Hi guys, I'm GT Ko and welcome back to my GT Catgasm channel. Before the start of this video, I will need to clear the air first. I have no financial disclosure and any form of relationship with Venus MedTech. So once the air is clear, let's dive into Venus P waft. The Venus P waft is a cell-expanding pulmonary waft for percutaneous implantation, particularly suited for those patients who had undergone tough repair. In short, it is composed of a nitinol support frame and a trileaflet porcine pericardial tissue valve with the 22 to 24 French delivery catheter. I will talk about the delivery system much later. Let's have a close-up view on the P venous valve. The entire nitinol support frame is covered with porcine pericardial tissue with the exception of the distal cells or outflow flare. The proximal and distal ends are flared to secure anchoring at the pulmonary artery bifurcation and the right ventricular outflow tract. The P valve is available in 10 different sizes. Previously, there were 72 different sizes and it is very difficult to keep such a huge inventory. The valve diameters range from 28 to 36 mm in 2 mm increments. The outflow diameter and the inflow diameter are the same and 10 mm larger than the valve diameter. For example, a 30 mm valve will have a 40 mm outflow and inflow diameter. Each valve diameter comes with 23 5 mm and 30 mm straight section lengths. And the overall length of the valve depends on the section length of the valve, roughly adding 31 mm to the section length. A P3030 valve will have an overall length of 61 mm. There are two small hooks or ears at the proximal end of the valve to attach it to the delivery system. The 28 and 30 mm valve is paired with the 22 French delivery system and the rest of the valves will need a 24 French delivery system. There are three radio opaque platinum markers at the pulmonary artery end valve location and right ventricular outflow tract, which are better appreciated in the fluoroscopy than direct visualization on the valve itself. Let's look into the delivery system and the loading apparatus. The delivery system consists of a 20 to 22 French capsule and a 16 French 100 cm long shaft with a rotating handle for deployment of the valve. The other loading apparatus includes the perch tube, the crimple, the mandrels with three different sizes, small, medium and large, the protection tube, the loading tube and finally the support tube. Now, let us give you a step-by-step -step live demo on loading the p -WAF. This is our long trolley for loading the Venus p -WAF, which is covered with a sterile sheet. 
we have six bowls here with each bowl containing 500 ml of normal saline and the last bowl containing 500 ml of normal saline with added 2 ml of heparin. This is the loading basin with 1500 ml of normal saline plus terra ice so that the water will be icy cold when loading the P valve. Please use a sterile forceps to take out the valve from the glass bottle. The forceps should hold the non-tissue part of the valve. It is advisable that the bowl should be brought near the glass bottle to prevent the valve from falling off. Extra precaution must be taken to avoid the valve from touching the glass bottle or other non-sterile surface. Put the P valve completely immersed in normal saline. Hold the valve and swing washing for 3 minutes or not less than 360 times in each bowl without heparin. Cleaning the P-Valve direction is from the outflow end and inflow end direction. Repeat the procedure 5 times in the non heparin bowls to ensure the valve is completely cleaned of glutaral dehyde. Once the valve is completely clean, put the valve into the loading basin. The delivery catheter system is gently taken out from the plastic tray. The other apparatus including the mandrels, crimper and tubes are placed into the loading basin with the exception of perch tube. Insert the loading tube from the distal end of the delivery catheter system. Connect the perch tube to the delivery system near the rotating knob. Hold the handle with your left hand and push the thumb pad with the right thumb and slide the blue handle back. Rotate the micro knob clockwise until a click sound is heard. All flushing is done using normal saline with heparin. Flush the outer casing canal and conveying canal of delivery system. A quick tip is to gently press or roll the outer tube of delivery system with your finger when it feels difficult to flush. Please ensure the other purse tube is adequately flushed. Use the largest mandrel that is appropriate to the valve first. You must always, I repeat, you must always insert the mandrel from the inflow end of the P valve and take the mandrel out from the outflow end of the P valve to avoid damaging the valve leaflets. Crimp the P valve axial symmetrically to reduce the overall diameter of the P valve. You can rotate and crimp gently the valve to the mandrel. After crimping, please make sure that the valve frame has no folding on its surface. Gently pull out the mandrel from the outflow end and replace the mandrel with the medium one and continue to crimp to reduce the diameter of the valve. The step is similar as before. Gradual crimping with hand symmetrically and rotating the valve. Please ensure the water is icy cold or adequate ice or else the valve will not be amenable for crimping. Again, after crimping, please rotate the valve to check for any infolding. Finally, use the smallest mandrel and insert from the inflow end of the P valve. The smaller mandrel will take more time to cream with hand. At this stage, your hand will be slightly stiff because of the icy cold water and it is perfectly normal. After each crimping, please check again the valve for any infolding or distortion of the 90 frame. 
Then insert the protection tube from the inflow end of the P valve. At this stage, we can gently bend the hook or ears or you can do it later after crimping with the protection tube. It can be extremely difficult to mount the valve without proper bending the ears or hook. Now, use the crimper to crimp the valve into the protection tube. The crimper should insert from the inflow end of the P valve. When crimping, rotate the P valve so that the valve is crimped symmetrically. A point to note that the hand holding the crimper with three pressure points to ensure symmetrical crimping force. We were told that we can crimp from either from the inflow or the outflow end. Perhaps it is better to crimp from the inflow end to the outflow end in one direction as part of the rule to do everything from the inflow end to the outflow end. Again, all these steps must be done with the valve immersed in cold normal saline. Before locking the two hooks or ears to raised U-shaped lock key, please gently bend the two hooks inward which was demonstrated earlier. Hold the P-valve with the left hand and hold the head or carrot of the delivery system with the right hand and insert into the protection tube. In this demonstration, the protection tube is just inside the inflow end but preferably outside of the inflow end to avoid damaging the valve. Lock the two hooks or ears at the inflow end of the P-valve to the raised U-shaped lock key on the delivery system. Ask the assistant to rotate the micro knob anti-clockwise to move the capsule forward. This is one of the most crucial steps and please ensure both hooks or ears are locked and inside the capsule. Pull back the protection tube a little and insert the crimper. Crimp at 2 to 3 mm distance from the inflow end of the P valve. Then advance the loading tube to catch the inflow end frame. Move the crimper more distally, followed by crimping and push the loading tube forward. Maintain the crimping and the loading tube forward force while asking the assistant to rotate the micro knob anti-clockwise to advance the capsule tube and catch the inflow and frame. Withdraw the loading tube and rotate the delivery system to check whether all the inflow and flame is captured inside the capsule. Repeat to cream the P valve more distally with the left hand and advance the loading tube with the right hand until the loading tube is advanced over half of the P valve. Check the P valve for any infolding by rotating the delivery system. Repeat the process of crimping and moving forward the loading tube until the bare flare outflow end frame.
check whether the bare flare frame is overlapped or not and straighten if necessary. Hold the loading tube with the left hand and pull back until the loading tube reached the golden opaque ring. Insert the support tube from the distal end of the loading tube and against the head or carrot of the delivery system. Hold the support tube with the left thumb and gently slide to advance the capsule tube with the right hand until the head or carrot. This is done concurrently with the assistant rotating the micro knob anti-clockwise to advance the capsule tube. If the assistant feels any resistance or difficult to rotate the micro knob, the loading should stop and perform a Tara check. Push the capsule forward to cover the distal end completely. Then rotate the delivery system to check the valve whether any infolding or frame distortion. Flush the delivery system again for a second time. Flush the first and second purge tube with heparinized normal saline. Finally, take out the wire and connect the syringe followed by flushing. At times, in order to completely clear the air bubble in the capsule, you can occlude the distal end of the head or carrot of the delivery system and give a slight tap to the capsule. We have finally loaded the PWAF with a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial. During implantation, rotating the micro knob clockwise will unsheath the valve from its capsule covering. The valve will expand to its original size due to the memory property of 19 off frame in body temperature. After deployment, the valve is competent with no leaking and there's no infolding on inspection. Overall, the loading of the valve will take about 20 to 30 minutes and majority of the time is used for washing the valve in normal saline. Previously, the valve was loaded by the Venus support team. However, with the current pandemic situation and travel restriction, the loading of the valve should be done by the respective centre. It can be loaded by the operator, scrub nurse, cardiac technician or distributor support staff. Crimping and mounting the valve in an icy cold water do not cause much of a problem in hand movement or hand dexterity in manipulating the catheters and wires. Of course, no hand spasm or reduce the catgasm. Who do you think should mount or load the valve? Please give your comments down below. And if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you like to be notified about my current video, please click the notification button as well. With this, thank you for your kind attention. Catgasm and yeah.